Good morning. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm about to get out of this hot sun and go back into my house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh my God. Down here in the Carolinas, we've been up there around 100 degrees. I mean, it's it's been unbelievable down here. So let me ask you this: Do I sound echoey? Do I sound echoey right now? No. Well, yeah, maybe it sounds like the room is right there behind you. But I love that kind of an effect because I think in a moment like that, listeners go, "Wow, I'm I'm being taken somewhere. This is very NPR like." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it inside here because. Uh, that sun is beaming down on my face. Go for it, dude. Man, you right. you are part of a legacy that people are going to be talking about years after we're gone. And that's what I love about American Ninja Warrior is that everybody on your staff is so willing to share the story. It's not going to be a magazine story because you guys are stepping out here talking with us. Yeah, you know, um, you know, Ninja Warrior, you know, it, you, you say story and, it, and it's hard to to say Ninja Warrior and not appreciate the stories that yeah. we've seen over the years when it comes to to Ninja Warrior. You know, I think back to, you know, Grandpa Ninja and I think back to, you know, some of the ninjas we've seen like, you know, um, AT3, um, who was an amputee that competed in this year, you know, to be able to get a big Brett Weiland who, who competed with and went far um, as an amputee, you know, Ninja Warrior is, is perhaps the most inclusive um, sport on the planet. I mean, nowhere else will you see it, the stories of ninjas from 15 years old to yes. 71 years yeah. old, you know, men and women, um, you know, just competing on the same platform, the same obstacle um, and making no excuses. I can't imagine what each one of those players do, because I know as as a martial artist, a third degree black belt, when I would go to those tournaments, I wanted to meet my competition only because I felt like that we're both pouring a lot of our souls into it and we're going to need each other to build ourselves back up after the course has been taken. Do you see that happening? Yeah, you know, the, the you know, we've all heard of the, you know, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. We've heard of the Mamba mentality. Mm -hmm. Well, there is also a saying, the ninja mentality. And the ninja mentality is a very supportive. They compete against each other, but they also support each other. You know, this year we've seen ninjas, you know, go side by side racing. Yes. And this is the first time we've introduced this on Ninja Warrior on the big show. And of course, you know, it was met with a lot of anticipation because you're, we've always had the question or the question has always been asked, who's the best ninja? And, you know, sometimes the only way to really tell that is to put them side by side and let them go, let them race. Wow. And we see that this year on Ninja Warrior on Monday nights on NBC. Um, but what was remarkable was to see that sometimes ninjas do fall yeah. and we see ninjas falling in some of these side by side racing and as soon as they kind of get their their whereabouts after they fall and they're disappointed that they fell they turn around and start cheering on the ninja they were competing that is still <laughs> racing that to me is the ninja mentality because you can put away your own defeat in that moment and support someone else. I wish life was like that because, you know, the ninja mentality, I think the world, um, especially here, or, you know, stateside, that we we need to embrace more of that, um, you know, where we can put a, put away our differences, We whether it's, you know, race, gender, whether it's politics, and be able to support one another, you know what I mean? Um, and there's a way to do that. And I think it's the ninja mentality. You know what? I think you just explained the subliminal message of that entire show. Why I always feel so positive when the show is over. Because you're right. When they're cheering each other and those cameras zoom in on them. I mean, it just it makes you feel great as a human being on this side of the screen. Yeah. And, and let me say this. You know why you feel that way? Because deep down inside, you know, all of us are flawed as human. Yep. It's a hard thing to do. It's not easy. So, you know, I think if anything, I think sometimes when we're showing it in just an hour or two hour show, you know, it makes it look like it's easy. And I try to remind my kids of this all the time. And this is real talk. Um, I try to remind my kids to be happy for one another. I say, you guys don't always get the same thing. Sometimes I purposely do this with my own kids. Yeah. Like I'll come off the road and maybe I'll buy one kid a cap and not the others. And then how come like be happy and I do it on purpose because in life, we don't always get the same things. And so I'm trying to train my kids to be happy for someone else. 
And then I'll buy another kid something and the other guy, but I didn't remember when I got you that cap. Yeah. Remember how your sister or your brother was happy for you? Be happy for this person because in time they'll realize and hopefully grow to realize like, you know what? I didn't have to get everything that this other person got. The things that I got, I'm happy for, I'm grateful for. And these ninjas, they express that in competition. That's the hardest part because you're at your highest level of emotions, right? Like when I'm competing, you know, the things that come out is raw. And that's where you know it's authentic with the ninjas because you can't put on a show when you're competing because you're in a zone, right? Yep. Like, um, and so when you see these ninjas in the zone and break out of the zone to start cheering for somebody else, like that's dope. Like that's what everybody should tap into. And that body isn't always going to show up. And that's and I, th- I think that was a, a wake up call for the everyday average person this past week when Kevin Hart blew out his legs in that forty yard dash. We think we can come on and be on American Ninja Warrior, but my God, will the body be able to handle it? Yeah, that's oh yeah. Look, sh- sh- like Kevin Hart, man. First off, you roll, know it. <laughs> your mouth, shut it. <laughs> because uh, I, let me just let, let me back let, let digress here for a second. Um, I told my son that uh, he's 11 years old. I told him he's not going to be be able to beat me in a race until he's 21. Yeah. And the other day, you know, he's starting to train for track right now. And the other day, you know, you know, we we're going through some track warm up exercises, and we started to do some sprint. And I saw that he wasn't going 100%. I said, come on, let, let me get hop on the line. And I started to race, and he was on my heel. I'm going, oh, no, 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 I can't let him think. <laughs> but I had no more gears. I had nothing left. And my pride wanted me to go turn it up to two or three more notches to separate. And I said, you better choke this thing right now. <laughs> and so I stopped. I still beat him, but I beat him by, like, maybe, like, like less than a meter, right? Oh and I'm like, oh boy, he is literally like a week or two away from beating me because <laughs> I couldn't go any faster. <laughs> and what Kevin Hart did was he let his pride get to him and blew up everything. I mean, blew up the whole system, oh you know? Oh my God, oh my God. Dude, congratulations on this brand new season of American Ninja Warrior. I love what you guys are doing globally. And I just think like like the message you shared, I mean, it, this is this is about uniting and, and without any judgment of any person, everyone is always welcome. Yeah, everyone can be a ninja. I wrote a book about that. And this year, um, now obviously I'm talking about in life overcoming obstacles, but this season we do have someone who's going to be that Ninja Warrior champion, a million dollar winner. You know, on Ninja Warriors, 15 seasons, we've only had a handful of ninjas ever win. It is equivalent to winning the lottery because (laughs) it is that hard to win. The odds are stacked up against you. You have to go through so many different and difficult obstacles. And to be able to get that this year on stage four and to have multiple competitors make it to stage four, it's not just one person. It is a showdown. This season is probably one of the best seasons of American Ninja Warrior. I can't wait for the world to see that finals, but tune in, rock with us every Monday night. September 11th is going to be that finals, so you got to tune in. One of the things that I, I, as a broadcaster, that I've been inspired to do is to study those that go in there and that you have no script. Everything that you guys do as hosts of the show and as commentators, I mean, you you're you're pulling from your soul to make this story our story on this side. Yeah, well, I think there's preparation that goes into it. The preparation for me starts when I I actually go in and I study every single ninja that competes. I watch their videos. I get to know them through their videos, their submission videos. And then I take notes. And the reason why, and there are hundreds of athletes, and it's an incredible amount of time that I put into it. But the reason why I do it is because, you know, for me, you know, I wasn't a big name football player, right? I made it to the NFL and I'm, I'm very happy of the accomplishment. I was able to live out a childhood dream of making it to play pro ball. But the one thing that kind of stung me that still sticks with me is the fact that, you know, I worked my butt off to make a play and, you know, the announcer would just kind of overlook me mm-hmm. to mention the big name guy on the team, right? And to me, I always felt personally that they, that was a little lazy. Uh, and I thought, wow, like there's so many of these, because if you look on any NFL team, any NBA team, there's usually one or two 
big name guy and the rest of them are hard 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 hat workers Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you know these aren't going to be your hall of famers or whatever you know you're lucky on an nfl squad to get five big name guys on a team right and there are 22 guys on you know 11 on one side 11 on the other 53 men on the roster so there are a lot of hard hat workers and who's giving them that love who's actually recognizing the amount of work that they put in. So I said, if I ever had that turn and that opportunity that I was going to give love to the biggest name then and to the least recognized name. Right. Um, and so I always want to make sure that I give the life into their show. And one of the biggest compliments I ever had in my entire ninja career was, um, you know, when one of the ninjas came to me and said, Hey, you know, I actually didn't know what I was doing was a big deal until I heard you call my run and it just broke me because I didn't just, Oh yeah. You know, check out this ninja, this ninja just, you know, I give it everything I have because that's what I would want done for me. Like I know this person didn't just pop up and show up. This person trained for this moment, trained to get here. And when you watch their video, you know, their story, it allows you to tell their story in a different way. And so um, yeah, it, I think it came from a wound of mine that I turned it into, uh, into a power. Wow. Can they hear you? I mean, where, whereabouts are you uh, g- compared to that chorus? Because I mean, that's one thing that I like about going to an NBA game is that I can sit as close to those announcers and I'll sit there and listen to them and watch the game at the same time. Yeah. 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 They, they can hear us, oh. you know, the closer they get to the buzzer because we're towards on the, in the qualifying round, we're close to, uh, we're close to the buzzer. In the semifinals, they pass us halfway through uh, and they can hear us talking, you know, so there's an area in the zone that they get to. Um, but yeah, they, they can hear us because Matt and I, we are, we're not quiet people. <laughs> no. We're very loud. We're very <laughs> animated. And so they've got to stay focused. You know, a couple of times this year we've had, uh, and, and even in the past, Joe Morofsky or somebody will say, hey man, you know I can hear you or they'll <laughs> respond to us while they're competing. I'm like, wait, you can do that like for me like look i got what i call dad brain i am single track mind i'm doing one thing at a time so they're like yo like i can hear you and i'm like wait you can do the obstacle and hear and talk at the same oh my like i'm barely at this age i'm barely chewing gum and walking at the same time (laughs) Have, have they figured out a way to warm up that water because you guys are out there in the middle of that desert at night aren't you no, 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 no. The, the, I don't think anyone, the shock, when you see the ninjas <laughs> fall in that water and you see like, <laughs> because that water is so cold. It's just like, it's just like doing a cold plunge. It's like doing a cold plunge. There's nothing you can do to, <laughs> to prepare you for that. <laughs> so like when, when you, when you're preparing yourself for each, each one of these episodes, you, you were, you were talking about that there's four different stages, those stages, you, do you get up close and personal with, with the players? Because I mean, or is that one thing where you guys have got to keep your distance so that you don't play favoritism? No, no, there's no favoritism. Well, we have a rooting interest for all the ninjas, but we're up and close like that stage four this year. When you see the ninja competing on stage four, we're right there. Like I'm right at the bottom of the tower. Matt and I are right at the bottom of the tower and we are calling it. They can hear our every run, but that's a part of it to be able to have us right there to call this rope climb. That is that's fourth that that fourth stage is a 75 foot rope that these ninjas have to climb up to the top, hit that buzzer in under 30 seconds. You hit that in under 30 seconds, you win a million dollars. But now, mind you, that's equivalent to climbing up eight stories. I don't know about you, but (laughs) ain't nobody got that kind of strength. (laughs) I don't have that kind of strength to climb up eight stories. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot. And you're rope climbing, and if you can get, I mean, it would take me at least a month to get up there because I'm gonna have to take a whole bunch of breaks. So what sport is the fastest on the planet? Because I mean, I mean, when you talk about that 30 seconds, I mean, that to me says American Ninja Warrior has got to be the fastest or one of the fastest. I mean, it, it could be a rodeo. It, it actually could be hockey. Which which one really do you feel has the fastest plays and you've got to be paying attention? Oh, boy. Ah, that's so different because the speed comes in so many different, there's so many variables to yeah. speed, right? Where it's the speed of a ball, the speed of a, of a sprint, right? Like, you know, to be at the Olympics uh, a couple of years ago and to be able to watch, you know, some of the greatest athletes sprint in real life to see humans move that fast. 
you know, um, it's like watching the launching of a human satellite, you know, like, um, you know, I will just say that Ninja has its own speed yep. and the speed um, to me, and it's the combination of speed and accuracy at the same time to be able to make the connection while moving so fast or for the see the ninjas this year racing side by side and to be able to connect all of that while and 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 and, and race that's that's difficult because there's a lot of accuracy with ninja warrior it's all about hitting those obstacles at the right point at the right angle one little slip up one little like miss mishap and you're you're in the water so you can't afford it the margin of error is so is so small and so I'm always in awe when I watch these ninjas do it. Yeah, one of the things that I have to deal with and I need to get over it is that if I see them not start off as fast as I wanted them to, I instantly label them a failure. That's just wrong because they go on to win the darn thing. I learned in season seven, I learned at that point that I would never, ever underestimate a ninja. You yeah. know, it was the story of Casey Cat and Zorro. Casey Cat and Zorro came up to us that year and she said, hey, I'm going to hit a buzzer. Now, mind you, at that time, no woman had ever hit a buzzer before. And I'm not going to lie. I, I was like, yeah, oh, good, good, good for you. Good for you. But in my <laughs> head, I'm like, it's never been done before. And on top of that, you're like five feet tall or 4'11 or something like that. Like, I, I mean, if it's going to be anybody, it might not be you. And boy, did I have to eat some humble pie. you right. Now, I didn't say this out verbally. Mind you, I was just thinking this. And then she goes and hits the buzzer. But then she has the audacity to come back the next day and says, hey, guess what? I'm going to hit the buzzer again. She came into the tower. She wow. came into the tower and said, I'm going to hit the buzzer. I'm going, OK, look, take your W. Like, again, I'm saying this in my head. I'm not saying this out loud. I'm like, take your W. You hit a buzzer. You become the first woman to ever hit a buzzer like that's an accomplishment, right? She says, I'm gonna hit the buzzer in the in the extended course, in the in, in the finals, uh wow. you know, and in, in the semifinals. Well, she goes out there and she hits it. We are blown away. And that <laughs> took Ninja Warrior and the trajectory. I mean, that video has been seen over a hundred million times. I mean, that was the I mean, that was the first time I had even heard of a viral video because it popped up everywhere. And from that point on, I never, ever, she taught me a lesson. In fact, I wrote about her in my book because it was humbling for me because we all do it. You yep. go and tell someone, hey, I want to do this. And people in their head, they may not tell you out loud, but they're doubting you. And I was a doubter of Casey Catanzaro. And look at her now, has a successful WWE career. I mean, dominated on Ninja Warrior, was able to take that success and move it into the WWE. Uh, I'm super, super proud of her i'm super happy of me and i admitted and i even apologized to her because i was like i doubted you and she said you know what she felt doubt her whole life being wow. five feet tall and people not thinking she could accomplish much because of her size and it taught me it has nothing you know there's the cliche never judge a book by its cover but then yep. there's the reality of never judging someone by, by by the cover and so she taught me the real life version of that. And it is stuck with me forever. So whenever I see a ninja compete, I don't care if they don't have, you know, if they're missing a leg, which we've had ninjas compete with, you know, amputees compete. Mm -hmm. I don't care what their conditions are. I'm never judging them. I actually go on the ride with them because as my dad once told me about a tree that he planted when he was in Nigeria that everybody gave up on. It became the biggest apple tree in in in, in his neighborhood. Uh, he says, "You never know God's surprise, and you really right. don't. You, when it comes to Ninja Warrior, Ninja Warrior, you never know God's surprise." Wow, I love where your heart is, man. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. All right, thank you so much. You be brilliant today, okay, sir? All right, thank you.